Good afternoon, Chair. Good afternoon. Um, could we please pull up POL 00054371, please? Um, this is an email thread um, with the subject Horizon Disputed Cases. And if we turn over to the third page and scroll down, please, um, to the bottom, we can see the start of this email chain um, between a Jason Collins Graham Brander and Andy Hayward. You're not copied into that, Mr. Smith. Um, and if we scroll over just so that we can see the end of that email. But it says, Andy called me and asked whether you guys, um, Graham, if FIU have any cases in dispute slash new issues that could affect your case, could put together some stats on these cases where the accused defence was slash is that the horizon data is unreliable for any amount of reasons given by the accused. This should be sent to Ian within the next few days. Ian will need as much information as possible. And if we scroll up, um, we can see a further email, again at the top of that page, talking about two cases, West Byfleet um, and Orford Road, scrolling up again a little bit. But again, you're not copied into that email. But if we scroll up further, and again, oh yeah, no, that's perfect. Um, we can see you start being copied in on this email thread about just people essentially using or saying that the horizon data used in their cases isn't right. Um, do you remember being copied into this email thread? Not particularly, no. No, I don't. No. Do you know why, again, you would have been copied into this? Well, I mean, it's Mandy who was copying me in. Um, so <laughs> I was kind of... Mandy's go-to person when she had things like this crossing her desk. Um, I mean, my advice would, if I'd have been asked it, would have been exactly the same. Use the audit file. <clears throat> um, I mean, it seems as though um, that email comes from Andy Hayward, and it looks as though he's the one who's copied. Oh right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Would he? Do you know who he was? No, I can't recall now. <clears throat> would he? You and you don't know whether he was someone in Mandy's team. No, I mean I recognise um, <clears throat> I recognise some of the others. Rod, Rod Ismay uh, ran transaction processing. Sue Lowther was the head of information security, <clears throat> and John Scott was the head of head of security. If we scroll up further, please. Um, and this email says, as was discussed on the conference call, and taking into account Rob's comments. Um, were you on this conference call? Do you remember a conference I, call? I, I can't recall it, no. It doesn't mean I, I wasn't in it, but I just don't recall it. Um, to confirm that what we are looking at is a general due diligence exercise on the integrity of Horizon to confirm our belief in the robustness of the system and thus rebut any challenges. Um, that suggests that at this stage, the position of at least the people on this email thread is that there is no problem with Horizon, but we just need to um, check and find a way of making sure that we can justify that that's the case. Is that how you read that? Yeah, yeah. Does that reflect the wider attitude that you experienced in post office at this time? Um, I, I can't say that, um, I mean, by wider post office, I think you're going into areas like the network team. Just um, your, co I mean, yeah. even within your team? With, with, within the team, I, I believe that would have, would have been a belief that the, that the system was robust, notwithstanding what I said about it, you could never say never. And if we scroll up again, this email thread to the first page... and down a little bit. Um, this is again an email, this is an email from Dave King to the thread. And it says, as discussed, I can confirm that we are in no way questioning investigating the financial integrity of Horizon or of the accounting system as a whole. Um, there's almost a defensiveness to that, isn't there? That someone could ever question the system? Um. 
I think there are several ways you could read that. I mean, that, that may be defensive in the sense that some other party um, was not happy that information security were delving into this, this area. Yeah. Um, so this would just be clarifying, no, we're not about that, we're about, we're about this. Um, but I mean, the answer is I don't, I, you know, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just speculating and giving that answer. Do you think at this stage, this would have been a good time to do that proper analysis? My belief at the time, and I, I don't know whether it would come on to the, the slide set I produced, that, that it did need, the, the way the issue was, was boiling up, it, it did need something to happen, something different to happen. It, 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 not least of which, at the senior level in the business, people to get a hold of this issue. I mean, this is what the PR team were contacting me for. You know, we need to get a grip of this thing and, and deal with it before it actually bubbles up out of, out of control. Um, shall we go to that slide deck yeah. um, that you prepared, which is at POL 00090575? Um, it's POL 00090575. Thank you. Um, so this is the first slide yeah. of a slide deck. Yeah. Do you want yeah. to tell us um, what this slide deck is and why you made it? So um, there are two reasons why I created the slide deck. The, the, the first was that... Um, and I'm, I can't be sure who, but I think it was probably the PR team, had um, called a meeting meetings to discuss this issue. Um, and I was due to go on an annual leave, and uh, I, I was asked to jot down some, some, some thoughts on the subject. Uh, so, so that was the why. The, the, the other thing I used this slide deck for was to... I, I would have... Uh, I would have kept my boss informed of what was going on. Both, I mean, going back to the original Cleveland's uh, issue, that would have at least briefed them on it. Um, you know, my boss was uh, Mike Young. Also, uh, had as his reports service management and also security. So he would be uh, well placed to take a, a wider view than just just my view. So for those two purposes. So I created this just before I went on, went on annual leave. What, I'm, what I meant with this, well, part of this was about um, accessing the audit file in, in all cases. The other part came about, I was, I was invited to support the chairman of the, the, the Welsh Postal Board, um, who'd been summoned to meet with, with a, an MP, MPs, uh, to discuss the, the case of Mr Bates. Um, up, the, up to this point, I'd assumed that you know what the, the noise that was being created around sub postmaster who uh, who's um, who were claiming that their balance had been distorted by Horizon and, and had been prosecuted. Uh, what I heard in that session with with the MP uh, was, was was something different. And it seemed to me that the, there were these cases bubbling around in the media, and I, for one, you know, guilty of assuming that they were all about that. And in, in Mr. Bates's case, it was somewhat different. I mean, at the heart of it was still was still Horizon, but if you're going to deal with these issues, then you you need to know what you're dealing with. So that's what I was really driving at. In the people who I sent this to. I've been discussing this with uh, on the telephone or face to face, so I was literally summarising my, my my thoughts in the in, in the deck. A moment ago, you said you, at the meeting with the MPs, you yeah. you got a somewhat different picture. Could you? Or, or well, it was I, as I recall it. It wasn't about um, Mr. Bates being prosecuted um, because of the difference between his his cash balance, physical cash ba balance, and the system. Um, I think Mr. Mr. Bates was uh, contract was terminated um, because he would argue because of events that were caused by the Horizon system, uh, and that was a different different take on it. Um, looking at the, this first slide, 
um, it says, I'm strongly of the opinion that in order to win the argument, what's the argument there? Well, the, the argument is that the horizon is, is causing, um, causing misbalances and resulting in sub-postmasters being prosecuted. Um, we have to focus on what actually happened yep. and not allow others to conduct the debate around speculation about what might have happened. And what actually happened, you mean? It's the audit file, yeah. The, the, Just the audit file. The, 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 it's, the only, it's the only way, going back in history, that you can, um, that you can test this, this idea that Horizon caused the misbalance. If, if Horizon introduced um, a false transaction... For, for the sake of argument, that would that would be revealed by examining the um, the audit file. But it didn't occur to you at the time that there could be something other than the audit file that might show a problem with the system. Um, no, not not really. No, I mean, I in in the context of this debate, no. I mean, uh, no. So what do you mean by no? As in. <laughs> You, you didn't think that you thought the audit. Well, I, I believe the only the only way going back to actually prove it uh, would be um, would would be through the through the audit file. Remember the the, the proposition is that Horizon caused the problem. So how do I prove that Horizon didn't cause the problem? And that would be by the audit file. Now, if the sub postmaster had made uh, introduced errors into the system. Um, you know, entered in the wrong amounts or something like that. There were other means by which that would come to the surface, but I mean, that wasn't being said. Or a bug or an error. Um, How would that come to the surface? Well, the, the Horizon audit again would, you know, had one of those been missed, not picked up, not corrected, then that would come through from examining the audit file. Um, if we could turn over the page. Um, you set out the history mm. of Horizon and you chart through a variety of mm. cases, two, two of which are the main ones we've already discussed, which are Cleve mm. Leaves. Yeah. And if we turn over the page again and again and again. One more time. Um, Castleton. Um, and those were the two main cases where Horizon's integrity have been called into question, which is what you've recorded here. No, no those were those were the two cases that <laughs> Mandy Talbot corresponded with me on. Yeah. Oh, so you've limited it to what you knew about? I limited to what to what I knew about it because Cleveland's I was asked for some advice, which I gave, and then Mandy um, Castleton I think was the was the first test as far as. Mandy was concerned after Cleveland's, uh, and that's why it was was so important. I think that's why she continued to correspond with me. After that, it, you know, there was there was radio silence. If we could turn over to the next page, please. You say there, Castleton killed the noise until Computer yeah. Weekly ran an article in two thousand and nine. Yeah. What do you mean by killed? Well, th I mean I. <laughs> That, that was I didn't hear any more about it about this issue in general I think until 2009 that's when it really became uh, quite a, a hot topic the way you've drafted that suggests that it's not just in terms of your own knowledge it's generally it says Castleton killed the noise it doesn't say I didn't hear about anything until the computer weekly article no it doesn't no. does that not suggest that this is the totality of the cases that post office knew about. I, I don't think anybody would have understood that at the time. Okay. Um, and if we could turn over the page to um, page number 10, please. Um, you've summarised what you understand the horizon integrity to be um, and the mechanisms. Was this drawn from your conversation with Gareth Jenkins? It was indeed, yes. And that document we discussed yes, earlier. Yes, it was, and and indeed, I I think I probably, um, I think I probably I think the attached PDF document would have been uh, that would have been that document. That yes. document we looked yes. at earlier. Um, and if we could turn over 
Um, one more page, please, to page 11. Um, you posit some explanations as to why these cases are arising. Um, one, post sub postmaster has had hands in the till. Two, assistants have had hands in the till. Three, accounting error. Was that the order in which you thought was most likely? No, no, there was no particular order. There was no assumption that a sub no, no had assumption, had no. hands in the till? No. No, I mean, I think the, <laughs> from my point of view, uh, had the audit file had been applied, it simply said Horizon was not the explanation. Uh, that that didn't um, that didn't say that that didn't uh, automatically imply guilt on behalf of the sub postmaster. And if we could turn over to the last page, please, page twelve. Um, you say of the cases I am aware of, and then we've already discussed Mr. Bates's case. Yeah. Um, and you say in your last bullet point. Details of the cases do bear looking at. It, it's back to the point made on the front slide that because of what I experienced um, in supporting the chairman of the Welsh Postal Board, there were, we really needed to understand what the um, what each individual uh, was was claiming and what was the basis of that claim. And to what end were you looking at that? Um, I think from the point of view that. Um, I guess prompted by the P, the the PRT, you know, we we had to start pushing out some kind of answers. So uh, making sure that we're answering the questions that are being put, not just assuming that this was about uh, prosecution. Um, if we could take that document down, please. And this is the last document I'm going to take you to. It's FUJ zero 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 nine four nine five eight, please. This is turning back to Horizon Online. Um, and if we could scroll down, please, we can see there that this is an email from you yeah. to scroll up a slight bit again, please, um, on the 26th of March, which I believe was your last day at the post office or close to it. Um, I finished on the 31st of March, so this was a Friday. Uh, clearly looking at the time, I wrote this on the train going home. Um, and... You write this email to Gavin Bynes. Um, remind us who Gavin was. He was the account manager uh, for the post office. Well, well, the Royal Mail account, I think they would probably term it. Um, and it says, uh, Gavin, I, wanted, I want to follow up our earlier telecon rather more formally. Um, whilst we don't have a root cause of today's issue, given recent events, it is difficult not to suspect that it might have been related to the introduction of a change. Quite simply, there have been too many incidents where poor execution of change has caused a problem in life. Um, what did you mean by problem in life? Um, this was, I mean, I think we were in pilot at the time, so this would have been an incident happening in, in, uh, in, in, in a branch office. And... Uh, I mean, I can't, I can't remember the specific incidents, but um, it could have been loss of service, uh, it could have been problems with transactions, I, I, I don't know, but this is, this is problems experienced in the branch. Um, it goes on to say, the situation demands that Fujitsu take action that is game-changing, whether that, that be increased rigour and injection of uh, differ by skills or change in mindset. I also have to be concerned that we seem to be ahead of you and finding out for ourselves that there has been an incident in live rather than hearing from you. We have been here before and I will take a lot of convincing that this is not symptomatic of a reactive mindset. Again, we need to see action that is game changing to a proactive style of management. The wider pool business and major stakeholders have been incredibly patient thus far. I believe we are now on the cusp of losing them, and if we, uh, if we do, then experience tells us that we could well end up on the front page of the Daily Mail. That will do damage to the reputation of both our businesses. Um, were you angry when you wrote this email? No, because I would have calmed down. I would probably be angry when I had the, the phone call. Um, but m m my, my general um, approach to these things, if I felt angry, to do nothing and then to record it in writing later. Um, I mean, I, w 
are very uneasy about the nature of the issues that were arising. But also there was a sense of deja vu and this reference to, to, to mindset was really a reference back to 2004 when we did appear on the front page of uh, national newspapers and which resulted in, in me writing a, a, a mail to Fujitsu on, on Christmas Eve about the um, reactive nature of their service management, which was not my area. Um, I stepped outside of contract, stepped outside of the law. I said, you, you may have contractual acceptance, but you ain't getting the money until you do a number of things. And one of those was to... Well, both of them were involved in independent review. Uh, one was an independent review of some architectural uh, issues. Um, I meant external independent review, but there was, there was no way in terms of the architect that Fujitsu would agree to that. The other was in terms of their service management organisation, where they did bring in a, a third party, and um, that, that third party report was quite damning in terms of the uh, stuff that had been going on. Now, the story as far as service management after that was much better. I, I previously, uh, earlier on in the year, um, as a result of a number of incidents, spoken to Ian Lamb about the mindset in service management. Uh, put it, you know, left it at that, and he came back and said, OK, we, we, we understand. And um, they went out and recruited back to Fujitsu a, a, a guy called Dave Baldwin, who worked them before. And Dave came with a completely different mindset. Um, there was a lot of investment, and we got a very different experience in terms of managing the service. And you always felt that Fujitsu were ahead of the game, uh, in control of the situation rather than the situation controlling them. Uh, Dave moved on to be the account manager. He was replaced by Naomi, I, I forget her surname, but she was very much cut in the same mould as Dave. And she was in turn replaced by Wendy Warren, who had a different style, but uh, very much lived the philosophy. No matter how good it is, it can be better. And then we got to, to, to this stage, and all of a sudden it felt quite, quite different. Now, I can't recall exactly what the meeting was, but, but I went to a... Uh, I think it was pro probably a, a joint release authorisation board meeting. And the performance of service management in that meeting was lamentable. I mean, never mind being behind the ball. They weren't on the pitch. Uh, so much so that a, a guy called Graham Welsh, who worked in that um, and, and is referred to in, in, in emails and documents I've been seeing, he phoned me up afterwards to try and reassure me that on the ground things were, were rather better. And this is what I was getting at there. This is, you're now being driven by events instead of you having control of them. Uh, I, don't th I think within Fujitsu, uh, I think within Fujitsu that... Um, that there was some feeling um, along those lines as well. Uh, in the... I can't remember which document it was, but I, I think I had 74 Rule 10 documents to, to trawl through. And there's a document, there's an email there, where Alan Dalvarez is asking Fujitsu to inject a senior person to deal with, 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 with problems. And I guess that's one of the things that I was driving at here. You know, this needs some bolstering of effort. This needs something really different. Plus, you need to get... You know, we shouldn't be hearing from the branches first... The first we hear of an incident shouldn't be from the branch. It should be from Fujitsu Services. So I was, I was very worried about the way things were going at that stage. Um, and you mentioned your last day was the 31st of yeah. March. Did you feel like you had unfinished business on Horizon Online when you left the post office? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> In fact, I wrote another email that day that had been, uh, um, there'd been another incident overnight, um, which again exemplifies the sort of the unease I had about stuff. There'd been a, an ice storm in Northern Ireland. Now, ice storms don't normally happen. Uh, in, in our part of the world, they, they usually happen in, uh, in, in Northeast America. Uh, and it would have been easy to dismiss what happened uh, as down to, you know, once in a hundred year weather 
uh, situation. What happened was power lines were brought down. I mean, these things can actually not just bring the power lines down, but they can bring the pylons down with them as well. And um, the system had... So there's backup generators, and the system hadn't uh, failed over to the backup generations properly. And this caused a disruption to, uh, to service in the, in, 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 in the branches. And um, again, I found myself writing to... Uh, to Gavin on my last day, saying, how can this happen? You know, the, the, the system as specified should fail over cleanly. What's going on? So I was, I, I left very worried about the way things were, were, were going. But I mean, I had to hand over to someone else to, uh, to deal with it. Um, you mentioned that you were subsequently engaged by Fujitsu as a yeah. consultant. How did that come about? Um, well, I don't know the background from the... the I mean, Fujitsu approached me, and um, by this time, it was time to start thinking about what happened after 2015. You know, if you're going to go to... If you're going to go to competitive tender, um, and I think things were quite clear at the time that on this occasion we'd have to go to competitive tender, you needed to kick the process off around then. Um, you know, you needed to do your strategy work first of all, and then you needed to put that into an ITT, go through the, the, the process of selecting a, a supplier and start working with them. Um, so, I mean, that's where, um, that, that's very much where, you know, my head was. Um, thank you very much, Mr Smith. I have no more questions for you. Um, I think Mr Steen has some and some of the other core participants as well. All right, Mr. Steen first, yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Smith, I've just got one area I want to ask you about. Yeah. Uh, I represent a large number of sub-postmasters and mistresses that have been affected by this scandal, so you'll understand um, <coughs> from my questions that point of view. Now, you've been taken by Council of Inquiry, Ms. Kennedy, to documentation that reveals your uh, point of view in 2010 at the time when you're, I think, just moving on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you'll recall the question she's asked you, which was asking about um, whether when you wrote a particular email uh, you were angry and you described the fact that you try not to yeah. write emails when hot, yeah. uh, but deal with them slightly later. You recall that email. Yeah. Yeah. I can take you to it if you wish. Yeah. So at that particular juncture, what you seem to be saying is this, that um, you'd realised that there was a problem. The third party report has been, has been damning, your words. Uh, you've got Dave Baldwin and other people coming in, and you regard their quality as being better, uh, reactive, um, and uh, looking at it in more detail. Is that fair? Yeah, I think so. I, yeah. Right. Now, you know by this point, because of what's been going on in the press, and you know from your involvement in, in the post office, that people have been prosecuted by the post office. Yes? Mm -hmm. Now, at this particular juncture, on leaving the post office at that time, did you think to yourself, well, um, some of these sub-postmasters and mistresses have been prosecuted and imprisoned in the past under a reg regime that you, in fact, regarded, it seems, as being inadequate? Um, the, the, the period I've just described in terms of the service management was... Um, so in 2004, what happened, we moved from a system that was... Uh, you, you might lose to describe as a batch system, where if there was a, a failure in uh, Fujitsu central infrastructure, it would have little or no effect, Im immediate impact on, on, on the branches, to the online world of, of, of banking. So when there was a problem with the infrastructure, it would impact the branches in a big way. And it was that transition that Fujitsu didn't make at, at that point in time. They didn't make the... I suppose it's... In my view, it's about technical people not seeing boxes and wires, but seeing customers in branches and, you know, counterclerks, or so postmasters trying to, 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 to serve them. And um, so Fujitsu didn't change the mindset. You know, this is happening here and now. People are being infected impacted here and now as opposed to in a batch world where 
the the impact on people was 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 perhaps more delayed, and then secondly, and I mean what we found subsequently as a result of the review that I that that, that I asked Fiduci to undertake, was that um, certain tools and, and techniques that ought to have been implemented as a result of moving into the online world hadn't been put in place, and in fact I think Fujitsu invested over a million pounds in those tools and techniques. And I, being, I recall actually being um, uh, taking a, a trip to uh, Bracknell and spending a day going through and being shown uh, how those tools and techniques helped uh, Fujitsu manage the service. So I would say at the, the beginning of the process, um, Fujitsu service management was way, way short of industry standards. But 12 months later, it had caught up and uh, what I was observing was, was, was fit for purpose. What we're talking about is by the time you get to the juncture where you're leaving, yeah. you're writing these emails when you're yeah. trying not to write them when you're hot-tempered. Yeah. You're dissatisfied with what you've learned about the system, yes? Yeah. You've, uh, you, in your own mind, believe that it's been inadequate, it's been insufficiently insightful into the basic nature of problems, yes? What, what, um, there's two things that, that, that I feel at this stage. One is... I'm uneasy about the sorts of problems that we're getting. They're problems that, um, when you look at them, that, that really oughtn't to have happened. Right. Yeah? And the second point is about the way in which Fujitsu as an organisation appears to be reacting to the, 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 the issues as they arise. The fact that we're hearing from the office that the service is down, not from Fujitsu picking up the phone and telling us right. the service is down. So let's pinpoint that. Yeah. 2010, the time went by, you're about to move on. Yeah. You've got this in your head, mm -hmm. problems that shouldn't be arising, uh, and secondly, you're learning about it from the the uh, offices rather than yeah. Fujitsu. Okay, yeah. these two big problems, yes? Yeah. yeah. And at that time, just when you're about to move on, you also know in your mind that people have been prosecuted and prosecuted before the criminal courts or chased for debts before the county courts, and some people have gone to prison. You also know that fact as well, yeah. don't you? Yes. Right. Now, with the information that you've got in your head, which were the problems that were unexpected, and secondly, you're learning from the wrong part of the system about issues. With that, did you by any chance go to the legal department of Poll and say, there may be a big problem here in relation to historic cases, I'm not satisfied with what's been going on, and we need to look into those past cases. Did you do that, Mr Smith? No, I didn't. Why would I take something about a new system that was only just, um, only just being introduced and reflect that back to things that had happened in a quite different system? You didn't think that the two might be... No, no, they're two, they're two completely different systems. Two completely different systems. Now, I did, and in the... The Rule 10 bundle. Uh, I think this. I think this was around um, one of the one of the incidents. Uh, I think I did get him. Did get involved with certainly Fujitsu's legal people were involved on whether this had an implication in terms of uh, any any prosecution that might arise. But that was looking forward, not looking backwards. Uh, linking what's happening in Horizon Online to what happened in, in uh, Horizon Legacy Horizon, I, I don't think uh, I, I don't think you'd do that, would you? Didn't occur to you, Mr. Smith. No, of course it wouldn't. Thank you. Thank you. I'm I'm also representing a number of the sub postmasters mm -hmm. in this case, Flora Page. Uh, the first thing I want to ask you about is going right back, if I may. And um, if I could have a document brought up, it's POL 3092888. Um, this, this document, I hope, is one you've had a chance to have a look at, but I know you've seen a lot of documents. It's a, um, apparently an account by a sub-postmaster who was experiencing difficulties with Horizon. In, it seems to be in, in 2001, because that's the date stamp we see at the top. 
And if we scroll a bit further down, and if we just stay there, if we zoom in a little bit on what's in the lower part of the screen, we'll see your name is mentioned. Uh, a. Dave Smith. A. Dave Smith. A. That's Dave why Smith. I wanted to ask yeah, you. That's no, why I wanted to ask you. I'd, I mean, generally speaking, um, <clears throat> the, the, the discipline we'd operate is for me, for me not to contact sub postmasters direct uh, at times almost impossible to because we as senior managers we used to address um, meetings of sub postmasters on a, on a regular basis um, the idea is that if, if a lot of managers got involved in solving out sub postmasters issues they weren't passing through service management. Service management, therefore, didn't get a complete overview. No, that's yeah. fine. If, yeah, if what yeah. you're saying is this wasn't... Yeah, I don't, I don't think this was me, no. I, I, you don't have any I, memory of this. I, I got a lot of, uh, I got a lot of correspondence for, uh, for Dave Smith that uh, didn't relate to me. No, that's absolutely yeah. fine. I just wanted to be yeah. clear whether yeah. you had any memory of having actually dealt no. with a sub-postmaster no. experiencing horizon difficulties. No. 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 All right. Well, then... Um, Let's then move on a little, and what I'd um, like to ask about is the process that was part of the impact program, which removed lines from the suspense, um, it removed the suspense lines, as you put it, from the automated cash accounts. You put that in your statement, and I just want to understand that that's what you, uh, that's, is that the way that you would describe the removal of the facility to put money in the suspense account? Um, I think if I recall my, um, my witness statements, I think I will have referred to that in terms of the implementation of Legacy Horizon. Uh, and I, I, I used to visit offices that, where the system had been implemented. And one of the uh, one of the complaints, I mean, balancing was, was the thing that always came up, and in particular on balancing the, the back office printing, which was um, you know a big cause of the, the the problem. The other thing that came up um, was um, the fact that certain moves at the sub people in branches, and I, I include also our own branches in that. Uh, could take to deal with the discrepancy was to bury it for later investigation. And what I was referring to in my witness report was the fact that the, with Legacy Horizon, some of those avenues were closed down to people in branches. As part of the impact programme? Uh, as, no, as part of Legacy Horizon. I don't think, I don't, if you could point me to the... the, 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 well, thing the, the there are two um, bits of your witness statement which deal with this, so perhaps we can bring it up. Yeah, um, if you could, that would, would be helpful, thank you. Um, I'm just trying to find the reference, but I hope somebody else might have it. If I, I think I it's don't. WITN 0... That's very helpful, thank you. It's paragraph 17 and paragraph 29 of the areas which deal with this. Yeah, so I think it must be 29 that refers to the uh, suspense lines in automated cash accounts. Ah, uh, I tell you what I think is going on here. We're probably looking at the wrong witness statement. I'm sorry. That's completely my fault. It's WITN 0529-0100. Yes, that, that's the one. Thank you. So if you want to cast your eyes over paragraph 29 there. Yes, this refers to, to, to Legacy Horizon. Not so it's, it's certainly... Right, it, I'm not talking about Horizon Online. We're both talking about Legacy Horizon. It, it's Legacy Horizon, yeah. The inquiries heard evidence to suggest that these 
um, facilities were taken away as part of the impact programme? Impact pro yes, uh, impact programme did. I mean, impact programme changed radically the way that branch accounting was was was, was carried out. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not hugely familiar with the, the detail of that. The fact that I was able to recount uh, rather more detail on, on uh, Legacy Horizon was um, I spent, I think, the best part of six weeks when I first joined the post office being a cash account, being the supporting documents, and it kind of cemented in, in, in the brain. Also, when I was going around, I remember going to Colchester Branch. It was a, 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 a crown office and the branch manager and the assistant branch manager spending an hour berating me about the fact that they couldn't tuck these things away for later uh, investigation. But, uh, but I really have no insight into... So when you... you just to pick you up on that, because that's, that, that's, um, that's new for us. So a, a, on a visit, a, a, yeah, a, yeah. a person running a branch said to you and was berating you that they couldn't... Yes, and my, 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 my response was, and you're not supposed to, because you weren't supposed to before. And you, 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 weren't, you weren't following the instructions. You weren't spent, meant to use the manual system in that way. Uh, the thing with manual systems is that they're much easier to ma manipulate than automated systems, which, which are much more rigid. Well, that's, that's um, the way things were under the manual system. Then we have Horizon in its yeah. original iteration before the, before the impact program, yeah. in which people were still able to use the suspense account to, to park yeah, discrepancies. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then there's the, uh, the program introduces the um, requirement to, if there is a discrepancy, not to put it in a suspense account, but to make it good immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's some documents around that, and I don't necessarily need to take you to them, but there is one point from one of those documents that I would like to put to you, just to, just to sort of solidify this point, if I may. Um, it's poll 308878. And if we could go, please, to page 22. Now, if we zoom in on that middle section and the bottom part of it, um, it says here, and this is just, as I say, I don't expect you to have seen this before, but it's to put this into context for you. What it says is um, part of this impact programme, analysis has also identified requirements to more tightly control and police the use of the suspense account within the branch accounts. Only a limited subset of the existing suspense account products will be retained. The contractual requirements for agents to make good unknown errors in branch accounts will be used instead. Yes? Yep. Now, what I want to look at then is this. Given the history of um, AI 376 uh, um, 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 what we know about that and what we know about the fact that 0.6% was the target, and so therefore, even if hitting the target, there would still be some errors, would this not have been recognised as unfair, that unknown errors had to be made good, no matter what? Wow, there's, there's, there's a lot tied up in that question. First of all, the 0.6%. The, the um, unfortunately, and, and I've seen a lot of documents trolley load behind me, um, the, how 0.6% was arrived at is not at all clear from, from, from the documents. Uh, but I, I did trawl through them all. And the point about the integrity check, it was, so what, what TP were doing, they were taking the cash accounts as committed by the sub-postmasters and then taking the, the stream of transactional information and deriving a cash account, and the two should correspond. But the, the, the system process to harvest the transactional information was not working properly. There were gaps in it. And Fujitsu, to, to, to be honest, 
You know, I mean, a lot of these integrity controls should have been in the design from the outset. Um, I, I remember a conversation, it was almost a, a conversation at the time with Ruth Holleran, the business assurance manager. It's almost as if they didn't realise it was an accounting system. Um, so the, the idea of this check was to trap faults in that harvesting process. Now, if you go into uh, the third, um, the third ag agreement, uh, I forget the exact title of it. Supplemental. Sup third supplemental. And you go deep into, the, um, in, into the, the detailed terms of it. There's this wonderful statement. An incorrect cash account is not an incorrect cash account. Brackets, non-data error. And if you drill down into what that means, is that the, in a limited number of circumstances, there are cash accounts, the cash account committed by the office, which are wrong. And it does list the number of circumstances from which those can arise. Now, clearly, those shouldn't count in targetary terms against Fujitsu. And I can't prove this because there's not a complete audit trail, but I believe that may indeed be part of what the 0.6 allowance was for, faults that were not Fujitsu faults. There's a second point buried in there around uh, situations where Fujitsu have identified a fault but haven't been able to implement the fix. As a result of that, there's a sort of a side agreement which says, but you can supply the correct information manually. And again, quite clearly, it will be, I mean, that would still come up in the comparison of the derived cash account and the cash account as a fault, but it's quite clear that that shouldn't count as part of Fujitsu missing the target because they have corrected it, corrected the, the, the derived stream, albeit manually. So I, I think that the 0.6% was not a sort of a relaxation of, of the target. I think there's plenty of stuff deep in that uh, third supplemental agreement, which suggests that these were let for. Um, now, this, this point here is, is, is something completely different. This is, this is about the preventing offices from using the suspense account for reasons that it shouldn't be used. Well, um, let's just um, go back to what you were saying about the, the various agreements. What they certainly do is recognise there's the possibility of unknown errors arising, don't they? The, the, clearly, with the term incorrect cash accounts, which are not data area, uh, an error, it, it not only accepts that there can be errors in the cash account, but it actually lists down the reasons why those occur. And so given that, wasn't it um, more fair to allow postmasters a, a place to put discrepancies if they thought they were unknown, if they couldn't understand why they were being caused? Well, at, at that time in Legacy Horizon, they did have a place to put them, which was a suspense account. It wasn't until impact came along that that, was, that, was, that, was, that area started to be closed down. OK. Well, in those circumstances, do you think it would have been fair and appropriate to do a proper investigation of what was going on with the usage of suspense accounts, how much money was going into them, whether it had grown or decreased since Legacy Horizon was introduced, et cetera, before introducing the uh, removal of the suspense account facility? Well, I, I, you know, that wasn't... I mean, the, the people driving these requirements were the people from TP and from the network. That wasn't my... Um, you know, this is a reflection of the requirements that were handed. Do you uh, think it would have been fair? Um, I think, you know, I think when, you've, when you want to get rid of something, then you, you, you should understand the implications, both posit positive and negative, of the actions that you are taking. And, and one, I mean, one of, the, one, of the, um, one of the things that often, I think, happens with system developments is that, you know, th uh, this change is introduced because it will reduce this level of pool of error over here, and then you implement and suddenly you find that this level of error 
has appeared over here as a consequence. So, yes, as, as good practice, you would you would think through the changes that you are you, you are making and make sure that you fully understand all the implications of them. Did it perhaps suit uh, post office to remove the sums from the suspense accounts in this way? Because that, in fact, removes an indicator that Horizon may have been generating unknown errors. Um, sorry, can you repeat that again? Just make sure I've got it. Well, if money is going into the suspense account, it rather highlights, doesn't it, that postmasters are saying there's unknown errors here. Yes. If that money is no longer going into the suspense account, you've no longer got that indicator. Yeah, but you would, you would still expect that if there was a, an unexplained error that the sub-postmaster would pick up the phone to the, to the helpline and to pursue it through that route. But then it gets buried, doesn't it, in the helpline and you haven't got a big stark figure saying, here it is in the suspense accounts. Um, well, I mean, even, even if the... Uh, as I understand it, and I mean, I'm not hugely fam familiar with the processes within, within TP at the time, but I think even if... Uh, the sub-postmaster ha has to make it good. There was a, there was a process for registering the fact that um, the sub-postmaster didn't, ag didn't agree with the fact that they'd had to, uh, to bring it to account themselves. Can I just turn to one more small issue before, um, before I, uh, I finish? And uh, it's relating to the slides that you've already had a look at and it's uh, poll 3090575, page six. And um, what I'm just going to focus in on, if I may, is uh, the two sort of sections in the middle there. Um, believe Castleton's solicitor examined audit trail and concluded there was no substance to Castleton's claim and advised him to settle. Castleton sacks solicitor and proceeds. Now, um, in actual fact and, and fairly obviously, you can't have known what advice he received from his solicitor, can no, you? No, no. What I'm interested in is how you came to believe this. Where did this come from, this, this idea? Uh, that he had been advised because um, his solicitor thought there was no substance in his claim. Mandy Talbot. So Mandy passed on to you what she thought yeah. Mr Castleton's solicitor had advised him of. Yes. Did that strike you as unprofessional at all? Um... I, 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 I can't answer that. I, w I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No, I'm not a, I'm not a solicitor or a, a, a barrister. And I, you know, I don't know your professional standard. Did she mention, for example, that in fact Mr. Castleton was now acting for himself? Oh yes, I was aware of that. I was aware that um, he, uh, you know, the, his, his solicitor went and that he conducted um, matters himself th th thereafter. Yes. And was there any suggestion or thought, do you think, from her when she relayed this information to you that Mr Castleton may have run out of money because of the post office? I, d I, 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 I don't recall that. I don't recall that. Um, it, but, but that doesn't mean, you know, she, she didn't, didn't say that. I mean, we're, we're talking about, you know, some years ago, so I don't remember every word in every conversation. Um, that's, that's what I recall. Uh, and I, I wouldn't have got that from any other source than from Mandy. Thank you. Those are my questions. <coughs> Mr Smith, um, my name is Tim Maloney and I represent a number of sub, sub yes. I've really just one issue to ask you about, if I may. Do you remember Miss Kennedy asking you this morning about the counter-application integrity report to do with transactions being recorded twice. The Derby incident, yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, and and um, I hope I uh, recount your evidence correctly, but you, you said that you couldn't remember receiving this report. Is that right? No, I, couldn't, I, I don't remember seeing, seeing that report, but I was, I was aware of the Derby 
uh, the Derby incident. Well, forgive me for this, but may I just take you to one document to show that you did receive it? Okay, yeah. And it's, a, it's a, a document that was disclosed to core participants yesterday, and it's FUJ... Uh, yes, and, and uh, I didn't even need to read it out. Thank you very much. It's, it's on the screen now. It's FUJ um, three zero, two zeros, yeah, one four two one seven six, And we see that this is an email from Alan Dalvarez on the 10th of March, 2010. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's to you, and also copied our Mike Wood and Gavin Bounds. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, David, please find and attach the report from the review undertaken as a result of transactions being record, recorded mm -hmm. twice. And that's regards Alan Dalvarez. Yep. Yeah. Okay. D d um, does this, and it may not, but just for, in order to be clear, out of abundance of caution, does, does this assist your memory in relation to this report at all? No, it doesn't, but I think I, you know, in, in response to um, Ms Kennedy's questions, I, I said to you, this, this did concern me because at the root of this incident was something which, in my opinion, others may disagree, ought to be covered in negative testing. Yeah. i.e. there was a, a legacy horizon process that required a transaction being settled by using both the fast cash key and the settle key and that was changed under horizon online to just using the fast cash key even though the settle key was still there yeah. and that 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 to me is sort of a, a classic case of something that you know, we've changed here a, a process. The two keys are still there. You should test to make sure that um, the, the, pro the process filters out um, someone incorrectly pressing the settle key after fast cash. Thank you, Mr Smith. Can I, can I just press you slightly on yeah. in this way? Um, you, were obviously, you obviously were concerned about this. Mm -hmm. um, th th this. This was something important. It wasn't a minor issue. It was something that had mm -hmm. to be dealt with. Um, and you'll see that this is a report from the review that was undertaken mm. as a result of transactions being recorded twice. Mm. Given your concern about this, did you understand that this was a, a review that would be independent of those people who were making decisions about this, or, or, or was it something that had been made by a review essentially conducted by the people who were responsible for this in any event? Um, I, I can't recall who the people were, were who carried out the, the event, but I think there's a full description in the report yeah. of the steps taken to correct the error. Yeah. Uh, and I think that, you know, in all honesty, that, that's the most important thing. We've identified the root cause, we've gone in, we've fixed it, we've retested it and we've proven that the, the error couldn't occur again. That's what I'd be looking for in that report. I mean, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought that... Uh, this particular issue in, in, in itself would have called for a fully independent um, view. Had a report been produced that didn't satisfactorily uh, outline um, root cause, correction and what have you, then one might say, look, I need someone, a fresh pair of eyes, yep. to come and look at this incident. Thank you. Just on that now, obviously you were concerned with issues of integrity. And the subject line of this email is review of system integrity, mm. as we can see on the, on the screen. Can you recall whether, given the ongoing concerns about integrity during Horizon Legacy and in Horizon Online, and of course, um, with the recent adverse publicity, or recent to them in, in 2010 with the Computer Weekly article in 2009 and so on, whether from your recollection, around this time, um, Paul, Post Office Limited or Fujitsu, ever considered input from an external third party expert? Um, the, um, the email that um, Ms. Kennedy pulled up earlier, Ms. Lowell, where, where, Lowell, where, where I wrote to, to Gavin Bounds, yeah. um, I did make the point there that, you know. I think I said, you know, why, why wouldn't I ask for an independent external report if 
I don't hear uh, of actions from Fujitsu that are going to change the game that we're experiencing here. Yeah. So, I mean, I was very close. I mean, this um, asking for an ind independent report is, is, is not a card you play every day, but I had played it um, three times previously during my uh, tenure. And generally speaking, with Fujitsu, with a, with a technical issue, you, <laughs> you wouldn't get them getting a third party coming in. But what you would get is people from the very top of the organisation with, with, with no current connection to the Fujitsu account brought in as a team to examine what was going on. And that sort of thing was taken very, very seriously in Fujitsu. Um, I think they, they have a sort of red light issue and it would mean that also any recommendations in that report would get a, uh, a high priority in terms of being met, particularly when it came to uh, resources. So that's what I was... Re you know, if, if you don't show me uh, that you've got some actions here to, um, you know, significantly change what, what's going on, then I need you to do this. Yeah. And just from your recollection again, if I may, as the last question... Did anyone within Paul ever suggest to you that a forensic review of Horizon was needed? Away from that, those emails that we've seen, did anyone no. ever suggest that to you? No. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith, R Richard Whittam on behalf of Fujitsu. Yeah. Um, do you accept that uh, any system as complex um, uh, as Horizon uh, was bound to have some level of bugs, errors and defects? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, uh, and their detection could probably fall into three categories. Uh, those that were detected, so found. Those that were, at any particular point in time, undetected. Uh, and those that might be introduced at a later stage by yep. way of an update, a fix, or something yep. like that. Uh, uh, and. That was therefore something um, to look for, those that might be introduced by bugs, sorry, fixes yeah. to pre-existing bugs. Uh, I'd just like to return to your second statement, please, if we may. WITN 05290200 at page five, please. And we can see there, paragraph 12, the ultimate decision whether to release new software into the network was a business decision. This was taken at a release authorization board, which I normally chaired, although very much in a non-voting capacity, my role being to lead the meeting through the process. The Fujitsu release would be just one input, as invariably other system changes would be involved and business as usual departments would also have deliverables that required green light status for the release to be approved. The practice was to hold rehearsal meetings in advance of the decision point and thus sur surface early on, so early any potential no-go issues. This would include the progress with testing of Horizon. And if we went to, um, please, uh, another document, poll three zeros, 30283. Thank you. And we can see that's a, a, a release note at deferred peaks list with a, a reference number CSREN032. And we can see this is the 13th of October 2005. The S80 release note deferred peaks list counter details what it is and, and the abstract. This document details those peaks that are outstanding at S80. Uh, and although it's a Fujitsu document, we can see that its yeah. um, external distribution included Mark Reardon and Jamie Dixon, uh, who were people at um, the post office, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if we just go through, please, um, to page five of the document, uh, the introduction. This document is an addendum to the S80 release note detailing those peaks which remain outstanding once S80 has been implemented. This document only includes peaks that impact on the counter. Data center pinnacles are detailed within a document and it gives a reference number. 
uh, and then describes the peaks as either being peaks which were outstanding at S60, S70 or uh, S75 that had previously been targeted at S80 or raised in S80 testing and agreed to be deferred. Uh, uh, and we can see just, um, if we just go to the next page, so we can just follow the document through, please. Uh, um, there was no um, table of, of peaks deferred from previous releases. Um, but if we can please just go to page seven, we can see there that this is the table of peaks identified during the S80 testing. First one listed there, I, I won't read the, the, the number out. Uh, but we can see it's a stock unit trial balance report differing from the layout specified uh, in that it's missing a, a blank line. And that was the, the first one um, to give it um, some context. Um, if we could go through to page 13, please. Thank you. The, the, the first one listed there has a number uh, PC0116293. It relates to an imbalance warning clearing automatically. If there is an imbalance in an SU, then a warning is displayed at rollover. This warning has a continue button and should not be cleared until the clerk presses the button, but it actually clears by itself. So if you're not looking at the screen, you may miss seeing this message. And the analysis and proposal is it's not a new problem at S80, and the problem of SU imbalance is not a regular occurrence. Also, the message tablet is displayed for the duration of time it takes to print the report. It's thought at this time as low, and it's going to be um, dealt with at a future release. I I'm not going to go through the other um, entries in it, but uh, what was your attitude towards a, a, a document like that when you were um, considering release? Um, so the... As far as so, we're going to these two different processes: the the acceptance, and by defin by contractual definition, uh, low uh, severity uh, errors are not an issue for acceptance. Um, medium severity, um, usually there is a maximum number of medium se uh, severity uh, faults that can be tolerated. Uh, the usual practice uh, with, with all medium severity faults was that uh, there would be a workaround. So it would be uh, possible to work around the problems created by the fault uh, until such time as the fault was fixed. And then high severity faults, which, which um, uh, prevented them. Now, the, the high, medium, low is reference to business impact. And um, the view of low it items was, I mean, the, I think the first one you, uh, you, you, you referred to was a missing blank line on a report. Absolutely. And those, those would be treated as low. Very often they weren't fixed at all. Um, so, some were. Um, and uh, they wouldn't, they wouldn't, low items would not feature in acceptance and they wouldn't feature in release authorisation. Release authorization, you would get a full list of the medium items f uh, uh, with the appropriate uh, workaround. And that applied not just to Horizon, but it would apply to any other systems that are involved, or indeed the readiness of a, of, of a, of a business unit. You could have a high severity business unit fault. Would you, um, at any stage, follow up? Whether um, any fix had been put in place, I, w I wouldn't have done. I wouldn't have done personally. No. Why not? Because uh, it was. I mean, um, the, there, were, there were hundreds of these things, and I mean, many of them, like the first one, which were of no consequence at all. Um, these things will be handed over to service management, and the service management team would so. At the point of rolling out the solution into the network, control would pass from my area, project program management effectively, to service management for them to follow up. So um, somebody within the post office, once things like this were drawn to their attention, would be monitoring them, checking them and following them up? 
they they would they they would have them on their on their radar screen and decide whether they they were worth following up or or not. Um, I mean, some, sometimes some of these things were brought uh, to uh, through my process as part of change control, and one of our one of our challenges very much was almost a business case challenge. So what's the benefit of actually uh, actually fixing this? Because very often there was, as with, you know, reinsert a blank line, uh, it's very difficult to prove that there was any benefit from, from making the change at all. The, the issue you've told us about is in relation to uh, Mandy Tolbert and her concern um, uh, that uh, all post office civil and criminal litigation might collapse if, if the things weren't resolved, um, was um, brought to your attention in, in November, the following month of the same year. Did that trigger any concern about whether any fixes had actually been put in place uh, and there was any system within the post office um, to check? No, because the, the um, you know, what, what, what Mandy brought to me was a question where that what was happening in, in the court, as I understand it, the expert, the jointly appointed expert saying this could have happened, changed the position of the post office, is now incumbent on the post office to prove that that event didn't happen. And, and that was the question that I was addressing. Um, and the, as it happened, there was an existing process in place which was used in criminal cases via the security team which I referred, in effect, Mandy, Mandy to. Uh, and she took that forward. I think she convened meetings. Uh, I, I, I didn't personally take part in those meetings. Keith Baines, my commercial manager, did, because the action for my area would have been to put in place the commercial arrangements with Fujitsu to make more, uh, more opportunities to access the database available. Thank you. Sam, may I just have one moment? I'm grateful, so that's all that I ask. Um, Chair, I think that completes questions from the core participants. Oh, Chair, you're muted again. I was anxious for there not to be extraneous noise, so I keep muting myself. <laughs> Mr Smith, just following what Mr Whittam was asking you about what, in effect, I think he was talking about was the Cleveland's case, yeah? Yeah. Um, you deal with that, and I don't want to bring it up, but you deal with that at paragraphs 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32 of your second witness statement, all right? And, and you set out your understanding of what was going on. And I've read it carefully, and I, if I've missed it, I'm sure Ms. Kennedy or someone else will contradict me. But I can't find in those paragraphs um, a recognition of the possibility that what the joint expert reported to the court was actually correct. All right? It's all about how do we deal with knocking down his thesis, so to speak. And I'm just wondering whether it's fair of me to have gained the impression that in 2004, when this was unfolding, the post office simply would not accept that Horizon could have caused the shortfall, but further did nothing independently to assess whether, in fact, that was possible. The um, report that the independent um, expert produced um, was, in my view, uh, deficient. This inquiry has taken a great deal of, put a great deal of effort in terms of making sure it, it gets the right people to produce evidence. The expert didn't do that in doing his research. He, he, I think on the Fujitsu side, he spoke to someone from the help desk. You would expect in asking questions about whether the Horizon system could create, um, create problems in the balance for him to talk to 
someone like a Gareth Jenkins, and he didn't do that. Equally, on the post office side, the, the, the people he spoke to were at a, a, a fairly... Um, were at a level where I wouldn't expected them to be able to provide the, the kind of inputs he would have needed to make the judgment that, 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 that he came to. So, so are you... So that I can be clear, are, are you saying that you personally read the expert report and reach the conclusion that it was flawed in material yes. particulars. Yes, because right. it did, because the expert didn't speak to uh, didn't speak to the people with the kind of knowledge necessary for him to come to the conclusion that he reached. And was that viewpoint put to the judge who determined the case? Because, as I understand it, the post office lost the case. Uh, it, I think it, at the time I was involved, it had already gone past that. Um, well, sorry, as, as I've understood your witness mm -hmm. statement, you were being asked to come up with um, suggestions as to how you could counter the expert report. Um, uh, at the stage, I think you were consulted, or that's the impression yeah, I gave yeah, no, it was, I think it was more general than. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry for interrupting. Uh, uh, it was. I think it was more general than that. The question was asked: is, is there anything we can do, given this this position? And uh, as, as I've said, the the only thing that uh, I think we could do in that situation was to call for the audit file. In this particular case with Cleveland, uh, because I think it dated back to two thousand and one, the retention period for the audit file. Uh, was I, I forget the number of years, but it wasn't the seven years that it was subsequently changed to. So the audit file was no longer available. So, all right, rather than um, try and work out the detail, which may not be productive, am I right in gaining the, the impression then that uh, your view uh, of the expert evidence produced in that case was that it was inadequate and therefore could be ignored going forward, provided certain other evidence, like the audit file, was produced. Yes, I mean, the, the, uh, bear in mind that the, the expert witness in this case was the post office's expert witness, because the post office, at a very junior level, and uh, the, the defence agreed a joint appointment of this witness. So I think for the post office having agreed the appointment of the expert witness to then sort of say, well, the expert witness got it all wrong. I, I, I don't think it's a very credible position for the post office to take. Well, um, no doubt by examining the file, we can uh, discover whether that's a wholly accurate characterization of what occurred. Mm. Did you know, um, Mr. Smith, that an expert witness, whether appointed under the direction of the court, or by the agreement of the parties, has a primary duty to the court? Not particularly, no. Sir. You didn't know that? No, no. Right, good. But you would have expected that the solicitor of the post office would have known that. Absolutely. All right, yeah, thank you very much. Well, thanks very much for coming this afternoon and this morning to answer all these questions. And I think that probably sees an end to it now, since I usually have the last word. Yes. <laughs> uh, unusually, uh, Miss Kennedy, we are um, sitting on Monday, are we not? We are, yes. We have Mr. Stephen Grayston on Monday. Yeah. Um, so I'll see you at 10 o'clock on Monday. Thank you.